reviewing Daniel Isn't Real. Alright ghouls and gals, like all my new movie, review, movie reviews, I'm going to keep it short, sweet, simple, and to the motherfucking point. Alright, let's get it started. Daniel Isn't Real stars Patrick, Patrick Schwarzenegger, Miles Robbins, and Sasha Lane. And yes, Patrick Schwarzenegger is the son of Arnold Terminator, <laughs> the governor of California. Yes, he is a son of Arnold Schwarzenegger. And uh, Miles Robbins, you might recognize him from uh, the Halloween, uh, uh, re not remake, but uh, I guess soft reboot or sequel, the, the Halloween 2019. Here he is. Aww. You might remember him from that. He's the stoner dude in that movie. Um, Sasha Lane, you might remember from... Uh, 2019's Hellboy, and y'all might also remember from this Shia LaBeouf movie Just right here. do it! Um, so yeah, those are pretty much your three main characters in the film. And uh, Daniel Isn't Here is uh, essentially a psychological thriller with hor horrific elements, I like to say, uh, inserted into it. And um, this film is very well acted, it's very well directed, and it's... Uh, Basically, a big um, uh, theatric, theatric size, or not theatric size, I shouldn't use the word theatric, that's not a fucking word, sorry. Uh, it's a big movie size metaphor for people that have schizophrenia and multiple personality disorder. Um, Daniel Isn't Real deals with uh, Luke, who's paid by Miles Robbins, who is uh, a kid that goes through this traumatic event and he. Uh, in order to deal with this traumatic event, he re he represses this event and kind of comes up with this Daniel character, an imaginary friend, played by Patrick Schwarzenegger, and that's how he kind of copes with that dramatic event. And um, he continues on his life, and he becomes an adult, a college-aged adult. He's about I want to say 19 years old in the film, and uh, this is when. Uh, Daniel resurfaces once uh, Luke witnesses his mother go through this kind of like psychiatric break which also causes Luke himself to go through a psychiatric break and uh, that's where the film starts to delve into its metaphors and starts to show its true colors in which I mean that this film again is a huge metaphor for somebody dealing with a bunch of mental illness and it shows the dark places they go to and it shows them it shows how those type of people disassociate with their body and reality and for that I want to say that this movie does a good job of that. Um, this movie it had me all, all the way in, through the entire movie but I will say there were certain things that I didn't like in this movie for example this movie had a very very good idea and it was handling the idea of dealing with mental illness and all those things that I just brought up previously it was dealing with that very well but then it uh, went into this territory where it kind of seemed like they wanted to make the Daniel character, Patrick Schwarzenegger's character, they wanted to make him sort of like this kind of demon, but then towards the end of the movie they circled back to to uh, kind of like, okay, no, he, uh, the Daniel character just represents every single person that's ever had to deal with multiple person uh, dis, uh, disorder and who's ever had to deal with schizophrenia. This imaginary character kind of deals with everybody that's had to deal with these sort of kind of different personalities. And for the most part, um, that's dealt with very well. It does it very well where you see uh, Luke, a.k.a. Uh, this, this Vato right here, uh, deal with that. And you can clearly see, uh, I mean, if you're paying attention to the film, you can clearly see that this is a mo this is his uh, split personality. This is his violent form, his more confident form, his more uh, comedic, his more uh, intelligent form, and uh, it's very well done. I mean, whenever Patrick Schwarzenegger is on screen and he's interacting with people, he never actually touches anybody. He's kind of like on the outside, kind of like that, hovering over them, and he never grabs objects, and then they do this kind of thing where he's kind of like, I'm going to take control of your body, and they kind of morph into one another, and it's kind of like this thing where, like, the other personality takes hold, and anybody that's ever had to deal with that out in the real world, I'm sure uh, that's kind of more or less, I mean, I'm not going to say that I'm sure, but I mean, this is a good depiction of what I'm, what I'm sure that would feel like, like somebody literally taking over your body. And for that, I have to say, like, you know, um... In summary, 
Daniel isn't real is a very well acted, very well put together film that has a surprisingly good performance from Patrick Schwarzenegger. And I, you know, a lot of people do not want to give uh, Miles Robbins his props, but he is a very great actor in this film, and I really want to see him in a whole bunch of other things, as well as Sasha Lane. I want to see her in a bunch of other things. These three uh, actors deserve to be in a lot of other things, and this director right here, he did a, an amazing job at directing this film, and he brings this cool, dark, colorful aesthetic to the film, and he really did a good job of kind of bringing home the point of, like, this is what a person who deals with these kind of mental illnesses might go through. So for that, I want to give this film a 7.5 out of 10. And the reason that I'm giving this film a 7.5 out of 10 because there is certain things that I didn't like about this film. For example, every single female character that Luke deals with in this film, they are able to see like, oh, you have something dark inside of you and... I mean, I understand it's sort of kind of a reference to Luke's mother in the film who deals with mental illness and Luke kind of more or less kind of has these mommy issues or female issues that he hasn't really dealt with and that's why females can kind of, or women can kind of see this inner evilness inside of him more, more or less that they've kind of uh, misconstrued for like, misconstrued for like mysteriousness or like coolness or whatever. And another thing that I don't like in the film is, again, that this movie had a good idea and it kind of seemed at the end of the film that it didn't know what to do with this idea. And it kind of was like, okay, well, what do we do with this? Okay, we're going to do this weird ending and then we're going to circle back to our original point, our original metaphor that we were trying to make. And okay, now it's over. So that's why I gave that this 7.5 out of 10. And I really suggest you uh, check this movie out. It's available on Amazon Prime. And uh, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. And after this video, I'm going to uh, be doing a review of Guns Akibo with Daniel Radcliffe. So make sure you check that out. All right, ghouls and gals. I'll see you in the next one.